so this is place the move around a long time ago i made the review of the simpsons last family get crossover is the review still good i don't know i don't really, i don't fucking care i didn't leave this review at all in preparation for this video so that's not what this video is about it's about the crossover itself besides i made it back during a time but I only used one image in my episode reviews. So the review is the definition of outdated. I'm not interested in watching that review. But just bear in mind that it is a very outdated review with a style which I don't even use anymore. This should go without saying, but this is not a fucking review of the film guy slash the Simpsons crossover. It's just a discussion video talking about the episode. And there is a difference. I'm not reviewing this episode. I'm also giving my thoughts about it and talking about how much it holds up years later. Oh, and also, unlike in my episode reviews, everything we're gonna talk about here will not be in a chronological order at all. I will only be just be going over the highlights of what I wanna talk about regarding this episode. So how much does it hold up all these years later? Well, let's talk about it. What I found a very interesting touch is that Peter Griffin and Homer Simpson become friends almost fucking immediately after Peter arrives at Springfield. And that is so fucking great! Yeah, for those of you who didn't know, back before this crossover was released, the people behind Family Guy and the people behind The Simpsons were feuding a lot. Both shows made fun of each other. And it was obvious that the two of both shows just couldn't get along. But this episode proves that eventually they fucking got along. And that is so fucking awesome. Yeah, seeing Homer and Peter Franz in this episode is the best fucking part apart for sure. Now then, let's talk about why Peter got to Springfield in the fucking first place. Basically, at a gas station, someone stole his fucking car, so he had to get it back. Now, here's a fun fact. I thought for sure that Snake was the one who stole Peter's car. I mean, it would only make sense. He's one of the biggest criminals of Springfield, after all. But as it turns out, it wasn't. In fact, it was Hans Bolben, one of the dumbest characters in the show. You know, the character who dies all the fucking time and for some reason is still alive in the next episode. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, he only stole Homer's car by accident. Damn. That's a twist I didn't see coming at all. Now, I'm aware that Alice Mark made a video years ago talking about how he doesn't like the crossover. Now, I haven't revised his video on that yet. Don't worry, I'm leaving a link to it in the video description below. I don't fucking feel like it. But I will say that I will be addressing some of the points he made in that video. Though, it will all be based off memory instead of from rewatching the video. And there is, of course, a chance that I might get some of it wrong. Just bear that in mind for the rest of this video. Now, what I really like about this episode 2 is that Lisa Simpson is actually fucking respectful to Beck, yeah. And she's the only character of the entire fucking show who actually shows her some real respect. She tells her that she is really worth and she should be more happy about herself. And yeah, I said the entire show because this is actually a Family Guy episode. And yeah, it's a very fucking nice touch that Lisa is so nice to make. She definitely deserves it. And when I said that she's the only fucking one, I wasn't exaggerating. Usually when other people hang around with her from her school, they're just fucking using her. And as for Peter, he doesn't like to hang around with her most of the times. And the few times he does, he doesn't feel comfortable with it. And the few times where he actually does hang around with her and feels good about it. He only does so temporarily, so it doesn't really count. So yeah, Lisa is literally the only fucking person who shows heck some real respect. I just wish there were some people in Kohok who were like that to her too. Now one aspect I really love is when Brian is supposed to walk such a little helper. Now, there is one major difference between Brian and such a little helper. Since this little helper is an actual dog, while Brian is a dog that thinks like a human being. Because of that, it makes sense that Brian doesn't know how to walk a dog properly says the family never had to deal with an actual fucking dog. So yeah, it does make sense. With that being said, it's still funny as hell. And I also like how in the courtroom, a bunch of Family Guy and Simpsons characters appear. And they point out how they are similar. Yeah, most of these are just coincidences. For example, every town is a mayor and a doctor, so yeah, most of these similarities are just fucking coincidences, nothing more, I'm sure. But I will say though, it was still fucking funny. Now, if I recall correctly, I might be remembering it wrong, Alice Mark 
had a problem with how forcing its style to the Simpsons and it doesn't really work for the Simpsons. You know, if Ellis Park was talking about the first eight seasons, he might have a point. But the Simpsons, at the time this crossover came out, used a lot more dark comedy than it did the first eight seasons. In fact, it has sexual references and stuff like that a fucking lot. So, I disagree. It definitely was fitting for the Simpsons style which was modern at the time. And besides, it doesn't really bear that much science. This is a Family Guy episode, not a Simpsons episode. With that being said, I find it very fucking awesome where Stewie tortures fucking Nelson. He had it coming. Though, I must say that Nelson isn't really part enemy, at least not entirely. I mean, sure, they do feud quite a bit. But there are still several episodes where Bart and Nelson are actually friends. It doesn't happen all the time, but they aren't entirely enemies though. Sometimes they get along just fine. But this was still satisfying as hell to see. Now as great as this crossover is, and it's very great, it's not without its faults. And there are some problems that I have with this crossover, which I am going to address right now. One big problem that I have with this crossover is that Montgomery Burns didn't appear this episode at all. Except as a silent cameo. Now Alice Mark brought up why that is apparently the voice actor for Montgomery Burns and a few other voice actors for The Simpsons weren't willing to be part of this crossover. And honestly, I'm not happy about that. That was very much the service. That was a big disservice. And having him involved in the plot a lot would have been fucking great. I mean, he is literally Homer's boss. At the top of that, he is my favorite character of the entire show. And yes, I said favorite. I like him more than Homer. Why the hell couldn't he be involved in the plot? This is a rhetorical question, by the way. Yeah, it really sucks that he didn't do anything at all in this episode, aside from being the silent cameo. He should have been used a lot fucking more. And the fight between Peter and Homer? Yeah, I have a problem with that too. To be these epic fights only work if Peter is fighting Ernie the Giant Chicken. It doesn't really work for anything else. And what makes this even worse is that a lot of the casualties in this fight are actual fucking characters of the show. The fucking school children, which are major characters of the show, get hurt. Oh my Peter, what the hell is wrong with you two? Better yet, what the hell is wrong with the person who wrote this? The fight between Peter and Ernie the Giant Chicken, the casualties aren't as big of a deal since they are characters who were made specifically for the fight, so I don't really care much that they die. And what makes this even worse is that, what the hell was the beef between those two? They have been good friends for most of the fucking episode. In fact, Homer was helping Peter when his car got stolen. Why the hell did they start fighting and hating each other all of a sudden? There were stories were given that just came right out of fucking nowhere. And the fight is also ultimately pointless because by the end of the fight, they fucking apologized to each other for fighting in the first place. So yeah, that fight was a complete waste of time and honestly shouldn't have been in the episode. You know, I think comic book guy some of the best. Worst chicken fight ever. One by the way, this camo here is fucking awesome. The fight is definitely worth watching for that alone. But for nothing else really. So overall, this crossover, it's just like fine wine. Yeah, it really does. I fucking love this crossover every single time I fucking watch it. It's very funny, has a good story and everything. And I just fucking love it. I couldn't ask for a better crossover between Fabulica and The Simpsons. This one is just fucking great. It's truly a masterpiece. That's all I gotta say, people. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.